You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. It is time. It is time. They can't be like the Packers. No. Are you crazy? to Cheese and Packers, a project powered by the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm your host, JJ Leahy. Uh, what I do on this podcast, uh, goal-wise, is research project-based. <clears throat> Bringing something a little bit different this morning. Just doing a short pod, and this is um, just some thoughts that I have on where the team is at post minicamp. Um, little update, you may have noticed, no Ryan on the pod right now. Um, he's taking a short personal break. Um, the hope is that he will be back shortly. In the meantime, Clayton and I are going to keep you guys covered with some extra Packers content. So you guys will still have something to listen to hopefully every single day on here. And you're still going to get, uh, Wisconsin sports heroics. I have not talked to the um, always draft guys yet, but I would assume they're probably doing a pod this week or next week. Um, and then, uh, like I said, uh, hopefully the plan is for Ryan to be back pretty soon, but it's a good time of year for him to dip for a little bit anyways, because not a ton happens in June and July in the football world. But, uh, some of the stuff that is happening is worth talking about. I want to start off with uh, something that I saw yesterday uh, right after I uploaded the pod. And it kind of killed me. I was like, man, like, <clears throat> if I'd have seen this 15 minutes ago, this would have <laughs> this would have made it um, on the pod. And it probably would have been enough for me to make the whole pod about it. So this comes from Brad Biggs of the Chicago Tribune. Column, Chicago Bears offensive line still has big questions and moving parts, as shown by Tevin Jenkins and Braxton Jones. Braxton Jones is a uh, fifth-round pick from 2022. Tevin Jenkins, obviously, is the second-round tackle they drafted uh, last year. We'll get to that in a second. Tevin Jenkins is supposed to be their left tackle. Well, in uh, OTAs, he was lining up at right tackle, which I think was a surprise to some people. Um, Larry Borum, who was a fifth-round pick last year, so taking three rounds after Tevin Jenkins, was lining up at left tackle. A little bit weird. Um, That has changed. Tevin Jenkins seems to have been demoted. He is now running with the second, (laughs) second stringers. He's on the second string at right tackle. So Larry Borum, remember, fifth-round pick from a year ago, now has slid over to the right tackle spot with the ones. And Braxton Jones, their fifth-rounder from this year, is sliding in at left tackle with the ones. Now, as a Packer fan, I probably shouldn't throw stones here because we have Yash Nyman and Cole Van Lannen lining up at tackle. However... We do have hopes for David Bakhtiari to return and maybe Elton Jenkins to return at some point. Meanwhile, the Bears have just decided, no, the guy that we have is healthy, but not good enough to play. So that's not great. Um, And uh, it's, it's juicier when you think about what the Bears gave up to go get Tevin Jenkins. Well, they traded pick 52 and pick 83. 
Pick 52 was then used to select uh, Jeremiah Owosu-Koromoa, who's been killing it for the Browns. Um, I probably don't need to tell you who that is because a lot of Packers fans really, really wanted JOK. But if you're not into the draft, JOK was one of the very best rookie linebackers in football last year. Uh, absolutely lived up to the hype. A uh, lot of high hope for him this year as well. And then pick 83 was used on tight end Tommy Tremble, who was a guy I was really big on. Um, you know, and to be honest, he feels a bit like a, a Bears tight end. Anyways, he's a really, really good blocker. Um, definitely gets used as a move tight end. A lot to like about Tommy Tremble. It gets a little bit better than even that. Because that wasn't the only trade they made. Because they also traded up for Justin Fields, who has, you know, not been great. So I'm looking at uh, what all the Bears gave up for these two guys. Um, In 2021, the Bears traded away the picks that were used on Kadarius Toney. Evan Neal the following year. Insane. (laughs) Jeremiah Owosu-Koromoa. Tommy Tremble. Shai Smith, Jamar Johnson, and tight end Daniel Bellinger. And in exchange, they got Justin Fields, Tevin Jenkins, and Larry Borum. Tevin Jenkins, practicing with the twos. This is is like, um, this is like if, uh, who was our second round pick last year? Yeah, it was Josh Myers. It's like if, if Josh Myers was practicing with the twos, and we we were putting um, Rashid Walker in at center over him. Like, that would really suck. Uh, also, I, I think I mentioned this on the pod yesterday already, but the uh, Bears also got slapped on the wrist by the NFL for uh, doing contact drills, and that's not allowed, and so they had to forfeit one of their practices. Just kind of funny. The Bears are really, really in big trouble. Uh, I, I I don't know how they're not going to end up with the number one pick this next year. I, I can't find another team. Maybe the Jets. I, I, I really struggle to find a team that has as bad of a roster and as bad of a situation as the Bears do, but we'll see. A uh, little bit more context to the comments yesterday from Devante, I found the full quote yesterday. You know, we, we had the little thing about him comparing Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to step back and just read it in a little bit more context. So the question was, what are some of the maybe subtle similarities or differences between Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr? Now, Devante is put in a no-win situation right here because you can't give an answer that is crapping on your current quarterback, who is one of your best friends. You can't do that. You have to stick up for your guy and be loyal to your guy and talk your guy up and be like, dude, Derek is so good. You don't even understand. Um, so I'm trying to think of where to start with this. Adam said, that's a tough question. I mean, it's tough to compare. It's really apples and oranges there. It's a good, good answer so far. It's just a such a different ball game. Obviously, with Aaron who's cemented as one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game, that's just like comparing me to Jerry Rice. It'd be tough to do, because Jerry's put together what he's done, and it's undeniable respect for him. And me, I'm still going, and there's still a lot to that I have to do to be able to be mentioned with Jerry, and I'm aware of that. And I think Derek is also aware of that from a big picture. So already, the answer makes a lot more sense than it did previously. The The little snippet that is going around is... is Lacking a lot of context. I think so far, this answer from Devante is pretty rock solid. He's like, look, I think Carr is elite. The problem is you're comparing him to one of the best guys to ever throw a football in the history of the planet Earth. So, good answer. Uh, let's see. So he said, and I think Derek is also aware of that from a big picture. But as far as talent and ability... It's real similar if I'm keeping it real. Derek's arm strength, and they throw the ball a lot different. Like, Aaron is going to fire it in there. Oh, Derek is going to fire it in there. And you're going to know that thing is coming quick. 
and Aaron's got the ability to just kind of tighten that core up and just flick the ball to you. So the release is a lot different. But being able to get the ball to you late if they see you coming out of a break, not many quarterbacks can get it to you before you get to the sideline. Uh, calls to mind a uh, pass from Jordan Love to Devontae last year uh, where the ball was late getting to him as he's running toward the sideline. Uh, where did I leave off? It's this huge wall of text, and I've lost my spot. Uh, not, not many guys can get it to you before you get to the sideline if you're outside the numbers already. But having two guys like that with really strong arms who understand the game, and they have the mental part of it, it's just another similarity that they have. They both obsess over it, and they know everything that's going on out there. A lot of times I've seen Aaron call out a blitz when the safety is 17 yards off the ball, just kind of creeping back there. He said in practice, hey, he's coming. And I'm like, what? And then sure enough, dude comes flying in on the snap from 17 yards down the field. So I've seen that from Aaron. And then I've seen Derek literally give me a check that didn't make any sense to me before in college. Here, same thing, and we score a touchdown on it. So a lot of similarities, but much is different. And I think Derek is in a position for wherever he's chasing to be one of those all-time greats like that. Like I said, that's not a slight on Derek whatsoever. I wouldn't be here if I was slighting Derek, but I don't think that I'm ready to compare myself to Jerry Rice just yet. We'll see when it's all said and done, or after some more time, just to be fair overall. And I think the same is true with Derek. We're both chasing it and still got a lot in front of us. Isn't that a drastically different message than the one we heard previously? context matters so much uh i still gonna laugh at the little line about how they're super similar but uh it's it's in context not even remotely ridiculous all right like i said we're gonna do a super short podcast today um i am uh, about to head out on a road trip and uh, we had like an extra 25 minutes and so i said to the wife hey i'm gonna go record a pod for the people so, uh, this is actually the midway point in the episode. We're going to do an ad break right here and uh, then talk about just some general thoughts I have about where the team is at post minicamp. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. It's only a kick. A jump, a block, it's only a serve, it's only a tackle, a run, it's only for the fans. After all, it's only pressure. You got this. Adidas. Big thanks to uh, Packer Alex on PackersTalk.com. for putting together a nice summary of everything that happened. Uh, you can follow Alex on Twitter at Alex underscore Mayer, M-A-Y-E-R 93. He's a good writer. Um, 
I'm I'm part of PackersTalk.com. That's where I do No Huddle Radio. You should check that out every Friday morning if you haven't already. <clears throat> um, but Alex writes for them, and, and he put together a nice summary of everything that happened, um, kind of position group by position group. And so I'm actually going to use this um, as I'm as I'm kind of going through and talking about some of my my thoughts. Because one of the problems I have when I'm trying to do podcast prep is I I come up with 50 things I want to say. And then when I get in front of the mic, I can remember like three of them. So this is a helpful, handy tool because <laughs> it's got them all grouped together. Um, I guess the, the first thing I'm going to start with is uh, Juwan Winfrey. Um, we, we talked a good amount about Al Mazard and Sammy Watkins uh, yesterday. But Juwan Winfrey is a fan favorite and so I think that he deserves a little bit of airtime. He looks good. He looked good last year. I was um really wondering last year if if he was going to make some strides and um end up playing a role for the team and and the little bit that he did play last year uh went decently well. He uh he was a uh, wide receiver one in the um, uh, Cardinals game. I believe, I guess Randall Cobb did play in that game, but uh, it's just a good question. Who had, who had more targets in that game? Yeah, I was right. Juwan Winfrey had six targets in the Arizona game. Randall Cobb had five production wise. Uh, Cobb hauled in three of those for 15 yards and two touchdowns. That's, <laughs> that's not bad. That's pretty productive. Uh, and then Winfrey hauled in four of the six for 30 yards, no touchdowns. Um, the big problem he had in that game, did he fumble? I don't know if he fumbled. He had a really bad fumbling grade. Did he fumble? Why, why don't they make it easier to see fumbles in here? Uh, I see dro- he hit a drop. Maybe that's contributing to the fumble grade. I don't see any fumbles. No. Yes, he had a drop and a fumble. Maybe that was on the same play. I don't know. He had a drop and a fumble. Well, this makes sense. He was targeted six times, caught four of those, and then he had a fumble and a drop. So that was bad. So hands are something he has to clean up for sure. No question. Um, and then, but one of the things I liked about him. So if you don't recall, he is a... Um, Former draft pick of the Broncos. I think he was a fifth rounder. Is that right? Nope. Sixth rounder in 2019 for the Denver Broncos. And he has only played for the Broncos and Packers. He was waived in September of 2020 after he'd been on the roster for one year. Um, And he was on... In his rookie year, he played three games for the Broncos, and then he was put on injured reserve in December. So it looks like there were definitely games that he could have played in between there, and he didn't, but then he missed the rest of the season on IR. Packers picked him up one month after he was um, waived, signed to the practice squad, elevated to the practice squad on November 14th and December 12th for the uh, Jaguars and Lions games. That was in 2020, and then in 2021, uh, he did not make the final, the final 53, but obviously was brought back on the practice squad, and then he was elevated to the active roster for the Bears game in October, uh, played two snaps, and then he was elevated again for the Cardinals game, uh, which is actually when he ca- caught his uh, recorded his first ever NFL catch for 12 yards. Finished the game, we said, like, uh, like earlier, with four catches, four thirty yards. Then he was elevated again on November twentieth for the Vikings game in Week Eleven. December fourteenth, the Packers signed Winfrey to their active roster. Um, now I'm curious. So, would he play after that? He then played in weeks 15, 16, 17, and 18 on offense. And obviously he's logging more snaps on special teams. But he did get some good good stats in there. Let me see. This stuff is falling off the screen. Um, he did get some good stats for those uh, final four games of the season. 
In his final game, he had three targets for three receptions for 16 yards. So he was coming along toward the end of last year. I mean, you make the active roster. Uh, looks like he was always lined up as a boundary receiver. His best game was Minnesota. Uh, I, I guess grade-wise was his best game. Two targets, one reception, but it looks like PFF is not blaming him for um, only going 50%. It looks like uh, they're saying he was in the right place. Pretty athletic kid. RAS is 717. Not bad for a sixth round pick. His vertical was poor. His uh, 10 split was poor. The rest of his numbers were pretty good. He's got an interesting body type because he's a little bit shorter. He is 6'1. Is it 6'1? No, he's just six foot. Six foot, 210 pounds. So he's a kind of kind of a stockier, heavier build. Interesting kid. He's out of Colorado. Uh, I got a, a draft profile I pulled up on him. Looks like Dane Brugler, Brugler is actually crediting him as being 6'1. Um, formerly, before he was at Colorado, he played at Maryland. Dane says uh, what, injuries hurt his production in college, but he has NFL talent. And he did obviously go on in his rookie year in the NFL to get hurt as well. But he has NFL talent. Uh, he ran a 4-5-1, decently fast. Uh, let's see, good RAS, good size, okay speed, good explosiveness, okay agility at the wide receiver position. Guy should be able to put it together. Winfrey really impressed a year ago in, in uh, minicamp. Uh, I remember, you know, so Jordan Love was the quarterback there in minicamp. And I remember he and Winfrey really had a solid connection. He was catching a lot of deep passes. He was a guy who the beat writers always mentioned that he would find ways to get open. However, his offensive contributions are not going to be his path to the roster in all likelihood. It's going to be, what can he do on special teams? That's how you win a roster spot. If you're Jawan. And then once you are on the team, they're going to give you some opportunities on offense because they did for the last, what, six weeks of the regular season and then the playoffs. Um, you know, and, and so then you do have to play well in those opportunities that you get. Well, on special teams, he was intriguing. He actually only played in from week 11 on. So those games where he was elevated earlier in the season, he did not play on special teams at all. Uh, he did play on special teams in 2019 for the Broncos and 2020 for the Packers. Looks like he played about three games worth of snaps in 2020. 2021, he played six games on special teams. Unfortunately, his worst game on special teams came against the Niners in the playoffs. He, let's see, did he do any returns? Well, he's on, says he's got kick returns, but if I remember correctly, this column on PFF actually has burned me before, and it's not returns. It's um, returns where you were playing. <laughs> uh, he was on coverage. Looks like he, uh, obviously no field goal blocking or anything, but looks like he he was a gunner and decently good at it. He had two bad games, Baltimore and then the Niners in the playoffs. The rest of the time he was pretty good and against the Lions he had recorded a 90.4 grade on special teams. That's pretty good. I can't believe how much time I've already spent just talking about uh Juwan Winfrey. I actually <laughs> I actually have totally shot myself in the foot here. I do not have time to do everything I wanted to talk about. Uh offensive line the lineup has been Yash Nyman and Cole Van Lannen at the tackle positions. And they're alternating between those two, depending on which quarterback is on the field. If it's Rogers and you got your starting line out there, you got Yash at right tackle. When love is out there, they are giving Yash some more uh, experience at left tackle, but it really sounds like Yash right now. The plan is for him to be right tackle for week one. Then your guards are John Runyon and Royce Newman. No big surprise there. Josh Myers at center. 
I do think Sean Ryan is going to heavily challenge Royce Newman for right guard. If I had to put money on it today, I I think the safer answer is that Royce holds on to his job. We'll see. Um, obviously, Sean Ryan taking over that would be nice. Um, but it, it is really weird to me that Cole Van Lannen is uh, the tackle here. I'm curious. How, how tall is Cole Van Lannen? He is... I always do this. There we go. Cole Van Lannen is 6'4". Uh, he played at guard last year for, well, he didn't play, but he practiced at guard. Uh, list, he's always been listed as a tackle guard uh, on the Packers website. And then obviously for Wisconsin, he was a tackle. One final note uh, that I'm going to hit on, and then I, I, I wish I could keep talking because I'm having a blast, but literally the family is trying to get me to go get in the car right now. I still have to upload this podcast. Uh, Devontae Wyatt got reps with the first team defense. That was exciting. Wasn't expecting to see that, especially this early. Uh, it says uh, pretty. it's pretty clear that TJ Slayton is penciled in as the Packers starting nose tackle. We knew that, but still. Um, he's been impressive this offseason. But first round rookie defensive tackle Wyatt, Devontae Wyatt got some reps with the first team defense. And then Quay Walker has um, completely taken over as uh, linebacker two. Uh, Chris Barnes is linebacker three now. And something I've been excited about, the Packers have um, showcased some packages where Quay Walker is on the edge with Preston. And then they're they're putting Rashawn Gary in that old Zadarius Smith Rover role lined up over the center. That would be oh, mm, delicious. I want that so bad. I haven't heard anything yet about Kingsley, which... Probably means that he doesn't look that good yet, but uh, you know he's a fifth round pick. Always, always was a de- developmental prospect. But the sooner he can get up to speed and be making contributions, the better. But Quay Walker on the edge, I like it, man. Ryan's been talking about like the Micah Parsons role for Quay Walker, and I, I am so about that. Let's do it. All right. Again, super wish I could keep talking. I can't. I gotta get going. Uh, but uh, catch me on Twitter at JJ Leahy, L-A-H-E-Y. If you want to help support the show, patreon.com slash JJ Leahy. I'm picking up some new audio equipment in the next couple days here, so um, if you want to help financially with that, super appreciate it. And then uh, no pod from me tomorrow because I'm going to be on the road, but Clayton is uploading one. Should be a good time. You guys enjoy it. I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.